بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم My name is Zishan Abbasi and I am doing electronics engineering from University of Engineering and Technology, UET Texla. On behalf of CRD, I am here to present my research paper titled as Supervised Machine Learning Based Fast Hand Gesture Recognition and Classification Using Electromyography Signals in International Conference on Applied and Engineering Mathematics 2021. Among other authors are engineer Misha Uruj Khan, Munib Asif, Usman Babar, Naveed Khan Baloch, and Harim Khan. So here are the contents. Motivation, Introduction, Literature Review, Methodology and Results, and Conclusion. So what is the Motivation Framework? We know that all sort of disabilities are natural and are not under the control of any individual. It is quite difficult to observe ideality in anything as there is always an uncertainty of error or imperfection. Because nothing is ideal in this entire world. According to World Health Organization, more than 1 billion people, almost 15% all across the world face some imperfections because of having significant disabilities in one form or another. And a common perception among all of us is that disabled persons can't do anything on their own. And this needs to be changed in this modern era of technology. Especially in this current exhausting period of pandemic, disabled persons are even at higher risk of getting infected by the deadly and chronic COVID-19 virus as they are unable to practice protective and mitigating actions completely on their own. And the only thing desired by such disabled person is a more accessible world. And one of the key solutions in order to attain this outcome is to develop a gesture classification model using electromyography. So the key objective behind the identification of human gestures using gesture recognition technology is to develop such a control and intelligent system that can sense and transfer the required information to the interface device. So coming toward the next part, introduction. Importance of Hand Gesture Recognition and Classification Machines are built to give accessibility, precision, cost-effectiveness and adaptability characteristics. This work will facilitate the recognition of hand gestures based on supervised learning. Hand gestures can be used as a communication tool and their recognition and classification can help in interpreting human body language and ultimately in the linkage of human and machines. Such hand gesture based system can help handicapped people in non-verbal communication and physically challenged individual in non-invasive machine communication. So it is very important to develop a system which can recognize and classify hand gestures for interfacing of machine to assist. So here is the flow diagram. As the flow diagram clearly indicates that we have taken the EMG signals and then applied signal processing based techniques such as pre-processing, normalization and segmentation, empirical mode decomposition are implied. The cubic sport vector machine classifier is trained on four different EMG based hand gesture named as to wrist flexion, wrist extension, resting hand, clenched fist. Spectral domain features are extracted which provide less variance than other extraction method. Electromyography measures muscle response or electrical activity in response to a nerve stimulation of the muscle. The representation of electrical activities of muscles using EMG is done in terms of amplitudes, phase, frequency and as a function of time. The development and usage of this EMG based control have brought a major positive impact on the lives of disabled and aged people by enhancing their social acceptance in our society. Types of used hand gestures in our study, cubic sport vector machine classifier is trained on four different EMG-based hand gestures when the hand is at rest in a clenched fist and when the, when the wrist is flexed or extended. The first step for designing our system was to acquire some raw data. We have taken an open access data set of EMG signals regarding different hand gestures. This data is recorded by a special surface EMG sensor called the Mayo armbed sensor as it is easy and comfortable to use and it also records less distorted signal with improved accuracy. 
as the diagram clearly indicates that we have taken EMG signal using a myothalamic bracelet and it is connected to a PC using a Bluetooth module. And we worked on four major classes, namely hand at rest, hand clenched in a fist, wrist extension and wrist flexion. So our next section is literature review. In study one, researchers have used the techniques of deep neural networks. Motion of single and conglomerator fingers effectively filter out with a mean classification accuracy of 90% across various subjects. In this study, EMG signals were obtained using 32 surface myotronic EMG bipolar electrode and they achieved the accuracy of 98% using a neural network classifier. Similarly, in study, study 6 in 2020, the researchers have used the techniques of machine learning in which they have performed the real-time movement of the hand estimation with the help of EMG signals using SVM. Similarly, in study 5, researchers have used artificial neural networks for classification. This system can identify 5 motions with 85% accuracy and a mean reaction time of 3 milliseconds. This system is generalized and can recognize the gesture of any gender. Similarly, in 2007 and in study 2, uh, researchers performed the machine learning techniques uh, in which uh, its novel features include a physically informed selection of upper limbs for collecting EMG data, smart hand motion selection for simple identification and quick easy extraction of features from EMG signals. Linear sport vector machine achieved an accuracy of 92 to 98% on data set of 8 classes collected from 3 subjects. Similarly, in last, uh, in last one, in study number 3, researcher used neural networks and uh, in this study, the data is taken using electrodes placed on the forearms of the participants. The obtained results are very effective and the real-time testing achieves an accuracy of 96.48%. Next part is proposed methodology. The research methodology adopted for the classification of EMG-based hand gesture is shown in the figure. The first step for designing our system was to acquire some raw data. We have taken an open access data set of EMG signals regarding different hand gestures. The next step is to normalize the data set pre-processing and remove the noise element by segmentation techniques from the signal to perform classification. For this purpose, we used empirical mode decomposition, which not only removed the unwanted high frequency components, but also separated our region of interest. After that, we have extracted spectral domain features and trained different level of SVM classifier upon which cubic SVM achieved the highest accuracy of 98.9%. Database collection. We used Kegel machine learning respiratory dataset for our work. They have recorded EMG signal using a myothalamic bracelet having eight different sensors that acquire myographic signals using eight channels. These signals are then sent to the PC using a Bluetooth module. A total of about 36 subjects were considered who performed six different hand gestures. But in our study, we worked on four major classes, namely hand at rest, hand clutched, inner fist, wrist extension, and wrist flexion. Each gesture was performed for three seconds with a pause of three seconds be between gestures. Noise reduction techniques. The two most common sound noises present in EMG signals are instrument noise and baseline interference. So our first task is to remove variance from this data set so all signals have same range and then to filter out raw EMG signals from such disturbances using the empirical mode decomposition technique. In EMD, raw EMG signal is decomposed into various frequency bands known as intrinsic mode functions IMFs. These IMFs were consecutively generated where each IMF has a frequency lower than the last one and a residual signal. Since our major objective was not to decompose the raw EMG signals into different IMFs, but to denoise them and into separate ROI, it is done by choosing those IMFs which have lower frequency component and rejecting all the higher frequency IMFs. We select IMF2, IMF3, IMF4 which are at lower frequency and rejecting the higher frequency part IMF1. Nextly, we, we merge three, uh, three IMFs to get our ROI, region of interest. 
and the figure clearly shows pre-processed pre signal of the EMG without large variance as now their range is between minus 5 to 5. The difference between the raw signals versus pre-processed and segmented EMG signal of four hand gestures. Feature extraction. Feature extraction is a form of reduction by which an underlying arrangement of crude information is advanced to more reasonable ones. The major goal of our study is to classify different human hand gestures. So for this purpose, we have to choose the best features that serve as a basis for classification between them. Thus, before data classification, we must extract our feature matrix. So for the sake of simplicity and to achieve the best accuracy, we choose features that belong to the spectral domain. These features include spectral roll of point, spectral flatness, spectral crust, spectral decrease, spectral slope, and spectral spread. Classification Classification gives a solid base for data analysis to extract important features from the model. Now for the classification of extracted spectral domain features, we employed support vector machine classifier with various kernels. SVM enables our data to classify in a both linear or non-linear domain. It works by making hyperplanes which separate the data by creating the margins. In the case of hard margin, it separates the data by constructing the straight line, whereas in case of soft margins, the separation line is curved or may depend upon the type of selected SVM. Mathematically, the working of SVM is clearly shown, where Y is the weight of feature vector, F having B as a bias. And the classes which are classified are given as follow, hand clenched fist, hand interest, hand, hand with wrist extension, hand with wrist flexion. Experimental results, classifier analysis. As mentioned earlier, we implemented normalization, empirical mode decomposition, and sport vector machine for the recognition and classification of different EMG-based hand gestures. The sport vector machine kernels which we have used are linear, quadratic, cubic, fine Gaussian, medium Gaussian, and coarse Gaussian. As the table clearly indicates that the highest accuracy of 98.9% .9 was achieved using cubic SVM. So moving forward, what are the performance evaluation parameters? In this study, we use several performance metrics derived from the testing dataset by measuring sensitivity, specificity, false value, true value, accuracy, and precision. And the multiple equations to calculate these performance evaluation parameters are also displayed. Here TP denotes the quantity of accurately observed EMG signals Tn denotes that they are not EMG signals and predicted as yes. Fn signifies that they are EMG based hand gesture predicted as no. And Fp denotes that the number of incorrectly predicted EMG signals chosen by the SVM classifier. Classification results of cubic SVM. After training dataset on sport vector machine, we employed cubic kernel and it gave the best results. The highest accuracy of 98.9% .9 was achieved using this kernel. ROC curves of cubic sport vector machine. We have merged three intrinsic mode functions to get a region of interest. Figure shows the extracted region of interest of different hand gestures. So now I'm going to explain classification accuracy. We have checked the significance of multiple features and tested the competent classification model by using different feature subsets. We have used the cubic SVM because it outperformed the other classifiers. The time taken for cubic classifier to train the spectral features was 1.664 seconds with a reduction rate of 1900 observations per second. This cubic sport vector machine used 1 versus 1 multi-class method. 
This classifier scored 99% sensitivity, 98.82% specificity, 98.9% accuracy, and 99% precision. The false value for wrist flexion is 2.1% and hand rest is 2%. While true value TP for wrist flexion and hand in clenched fist is 100%. Comparative analysis. So here we are going to compare our proposed methodology with existing techniques and literature. In study one, researchers have used deep neural networks to classify 12 flex and stretching position and they achieved the accuracy of 98%. Similarly, in study 2, artificial neural networks was used to classify 5 hand motion classes and the accuracy achieved was 85.08%. In study 3, 8 classes of hand motions was classified using linear sport vector machine and the classification accuracy was 92.98%. Study 4 is based on classification of multiple hand motions using region-based convolutional neural networks. And this proposed method achieved the accuracy of 96.48%. And with our proposed methodology, our supervised machine learning model achieved a cumulative classification accuracy of 98.9%, which is highest than all relative models. Conclusion We have made a detailed investigation to assess the best classifier for gesture classification. Finally, using a five-fold cross-validation method, the best properties of dimension 1 cross 6 were used to train and evaluate cubic sport vector machine, yielding an accuracy of 98.9%, specificity of 98.82%, and sensitivity of 99%, with error less than 0.01. Hence, we have achieved our prime objective to identify human gestures using gesture recognition technology and to develop such a controlled and intelligent system that can sense and transfer the required information to the interface device. This type of model provides a low-cost solution and can be regarded as an optimum contender for prosthetic application. Surely, our proposed model can be used to assist disabled person and enhance their social acceptance. Future work. As the dataset was limited with only four classes, so the number of classes can be increased in future studies. Surely, this will improve the application viability of the proposed methodology. So here are the references. Thank you for your interest and attention.